This episode is brought to you by Rebel Massage Deep Tissue Body Butter. Crafted because oil is too slick and lotion absorbs too fast, these organic, professional-grade bodywork butters give you the grip you've been looking for. The best techniques in the world can get lost without the right product to support them. Try the Get a Grip version for more specific, focused work, or the Total Meltdown version for that grip with a little extra glide. Made by a massage therapist for massage therapists. Head over to rebelmassage.com to get your grip today. Join us at the free ABMP CE Summit on Monday, March 21st. This one day online conference focuses on fascia and takes learners on a journey from understanding fascia, what it looks like, its role in the body in different types, to working with it using multiple modalities and techniques. Instructors include keynote presenter Dr. Robert Schleip and CE course instructors Rochelle Clausen, Allison Denny, Joy Edwards, Gil Headley, David Lazondak, Whitney Lowe, Till Luca, and Kathy Ryan. This event and four hours of CE is free for everyone in the profession. Visit abmp.com slash summit to learn more and register today. Hi, my name is Allison Denny, and this is the Rebel MT Podcast, where you'll hear me forcibly colliding the worlds of anatomical jargon and humor. I believe that when you know your anatomy, the what, and you know your physiology, the how, the techniques will follow. But the loads of Latin and the gobs of Greek can make a cranium convulse. It is a little overwhelming to dip your toe into the sea of anatomical knowledge, only to find that it is a bottomless ocean. You are smart, but this is intimidating. You will get there eventually. In the meantime, let's look at things differently so that you will actually want to take a swim, or at least, Hop on a boat and take a peek at what's under the surface. Rob Libby is a practicing massage therapist in British Columbia, Canada. He has thousands of hours of education, as well as an equally impressive number of teaching hours under his belt. He has presented online and around the world to body workers who want to know more about pain patterns and, more specifically, ligamentous pain patterns. And he has written a book that is detailed, smart, and incredibly insightful into the content he teaches. But Rob's story has a little more to it than that. I ended up having multiple comminuted fractures. So sternochondral, Mm -hmm. so one through one through seven were fractured. Mm -hmm. Uh, Costochondral, uh, one through uh, one through seven were one through seven or eight were fractured, and then. Uh, one through 10 in the back, um, the cost of the tumor joints were fractured. Rob was in an accident that changed his life, but what it offered him was profound. As a person who had studied the human body and the science of pain for years, he found himself with a unique opportunity to perceive it from the inside. Before all of this, though, Rob had dedicated his studies and his work to how the human body actually functions. Uh, So my name is Robert Libby, registered massage therapist in British Columbia, Canada. I've been practicing for a little while, Um, graduated in 94. So that's, uh, I think we're going into 28 years at this point. I run a full-time practice. Uh, It's kind of a part-time practice. I'm sort of rehabbing from a motor vehicle accident from 2018. But up until then, uh, was running a full-time practice, you know, treating the same legs as everybody else. Uh, but I also have had, um, I've also taught at the college level for about a decade, and I teach ligamentous articular strain techniques uh, internationally and online, and uh, and continually trying to advance advance ligamentous articular strain techniques into sort of an evidence informed, evidence based uh, style of course, so that clinicians. Uh, of all kinds are more informed about uh, the current knowledge about what we do, how we do it, why we do it, and how we get our outcomes. So Rob is clearly well-educated and well-versed, but I wanted to hear about the car accident because not only am I fascinated as somebody who loves anatomy, but I also wanted to hear about how it changed the way he worked and how he approached his clients. 
So yeah, I just um, I just returned from teaching in Australia for a month and was coming to the office here to see the group of clinicians that I work with, just sort of like, hey, haven't seen you for, for a month. Um, and I was coming uh, up a main road and there was a um, husband and wife taking a car out for a test drive. And they blew through the stop sign and they, uh, they contacted me in the driver's side door uh, of my car, uh, which I had actually just, I had just restored to like showroom quality. So uh, it got totaled, theirs got totaled. So, so what's, what's, really, what's really interesting is that what we teach is, is very f- at the forefront of my mind while I'm going through all of this. And we know that from pain science or the science of pain and the, the study of the psychology of people that are in chronic pain and stuff, that what their thoughts, beliefs and expectations were at the time of the event determines sort of the longevity and the chronicity that they will experience discomfort and dysfunction. So while I'm going through this, you know, there was a there's a little topic tangent. There's a, a TED talk of a neurologist who was talking about when she was having a stroke, she had moments where she was in the stroke and then she was in the clinician sort of mind. And I was going through the exact same thing. It's like, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay to go, like, wow. Wow, everything that I wrote about those ligament pain patterns, well, though I can feel all those. <laughs> so yeah, I was going through all the different levels and it's like, yeah, that was the oh, oh yeah, that one's oh it doesn't go that way. Wow, that's wow, they got it right in the research. That's really cool. That TED talk, by the way, is Jill Bolte Taylor. Her TED talk is called My Stroke of Insight, and she talks about her experience of being a neurologist and having survived a stroke. In a lot of ways, Rob's car accident was no different. So yeah, so the accident happened. Uh, I started rehabbing myself immediately the same night. Um, I I didn't stay in the hospital. They wanted me to, but I didn't want to because we all know that, you know, adhesions and scar tissue, they start setting in within two hours. And you've got about 14 days where they're kind of like an egg white consistency. So that's when they're pliable. That's when we have our most influence on those tissues. So for any therapists that are out there right now that are scared as hell to get your hands on acute injuries, get your hands on as many acute injuries as possible, as soon as possible, because you can make the most amount of impact in your patient's quality of life. So long story short, I went home and I started stretching with fractures because you have to maintain what you've got. I didn't end up going to the research conference um, because the physician that I talked to the next day. He said, you know, I, I could let you go to the conference, but if you can tell me what your strategy is for when you're 30,000 feet in a uh, plane and your lung collapses, you tell me what you're going to do with that and I'll let you go. Obviously, Rob didn't make it to Berlin to present at the Fascial Congress, but he did start to dive into a deeper perspective about what his clients were going through when they were experiencing any pain or chronic pain syndrome. Well, obviously, just going through that that experience right we all try and be as empathetic as possible uh, with our patients and and try and feel for you know feel for them in all ways but until you've been through like an ankle fracture or you know a rib fracture and you understand that every breath actually hurts uh you you know we all get taught okay well we need to we need to understand our patients activities of daily living and those are our outcomes to try and get them back to normal And some of like the simplest things that we, we recommend to our patients, you know, for a home care remedial exercise active program, some of them seem like when you're in class and and you're a student or when you're practicing as a clinician, some stuff you just sit there and go, well, that just sounds stupid. Like that just sounds like that's like the, the easiest thing to do. But let me tell you, when your chest is crushed and you have to put a plate, one plate away in a cupboard and you have to reach up into the cupboard or you have to reach down into the dishwasher to get one plate out or you try two plates you know that that hurts a lot of us begin our careers in bodywork and massage therapy because we've been through something painful and we want to know more and we've benefited greatly from soft tissue manipulation Rob's story is a little bit backwards in that what happened to him came later in his career. Before all of this, 
he was very invested in figuring out why a person felt what they felt. So the the pain referral pattern story for me was back in 94 when I started practicing, you know, I had the trigger point posters, those really ugly ones up on the walls. And my patients would come in and they would say, that's not me. So I handed them a Sharpie marker and said, well, draw you. So over the course of about, you know, 10, 15 years, up until about 2008, I had these, these really ugly posters that my patients had drawn their referral patterns on. And I just got to be able to clock, you know, when someone walks in with a lateral collateral ligament of the knee sprain, this is a typical pain referral pattern. And my patients would say, yeah, that's me. Great. So um, I'm, we move our practice into a multidisciplinary practice with physios, massage, chiro, naturopath. The naturopath is in my office one day. He's looking at my posters. He's like, you know, I've seen these before. How have you seen these before? I didn't, I, I've only known you for five minutes. Uh-huh. This is this is uh-huh. 20 years of my practice. <laughs> he said, oh, well, these are called Hackett referral patterns. What's a Hackett referral pattern? So he told me about George Hackett and Gustav Hemswell that were medical physicians in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. And they studied ligament pain referral patterns. Um, George Hackett did, I think, 20,000 ligamentous injections to like 10,000 patients over a decade or something like that. And he documented it all for, for the, um, for, for the spinal column. So I grabbed all of George Hackett's research, uh, and then found out that the research had actually continued into the peripheral joint. So I grabbed all that research and I just thought, you know, someone, someone has to have made these pictures a lot prettier and put them in a poster format. So I searched everywhere and nobody had. So I thought, fine. I'll do it myself. So I hired an anatomist that was also a um, an illustrator, and we created uh, the pain referral pattern. So I printed a poster, I had it up on my wall, I had it there for about a year, and I was just all proud of myself. Look what I created! <laughs> I created this, and and no one knew about it. So I treat a lot of other clinicians and and therapists, and they were like, "Wow, those are really cool. Where do I get those?" It's like so. So that was sort of the beginning of the pain referral images. And then somebody said, you know, I don't have a lot of wall space, but if you had a book, I would buy that. And I thought, I don't even know, I don't even know how that would work. Like what would, what would go into a book? So while I was in Australia and I had some downtime, I started thinking and processing and and sort of getting the rough draft of the book laid out. And then on the flight back to Vancouver, I figured, well, I've got 15 hours. No one's going to bug me. And I don't want to talk to the guy (laughs) next to me. So I created the first rough draft of of the book. So just in case you missed that, Rob began to produce ligament pain referral pattern posters and a book just because he listened to his clients. Handing them a marker and allowing them to talk about their own pain became the beginning of a whole new world of research for Rob. His flight to Australia offered him a little time to work on it, But two big events then dictate what Rob does next. He experiences the car accident, and then COVID hits. In BC, uh, all clinicians got shut down for about 90 to 120 days. So I figured, well, I've, I got time. Uh Um, So, you know, with like post-concussion brain and and that kind of stuff, um, I very slowly started to sort of perfect it and get it the way that I wanted to and, and get it to the, you know, what it is now. Um, getting into the images and the book, what one of the one of the challenges I had that sort of made everything almost made everything stop was somebody said, well, these are just like sclerotome pain referral patterns, right? It's like joint sclerotome pain referral patterns. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> Have I just spent all this time and effort reproducing something that already exists? Like, uh-huh. no, you know what? I know, I know these are different. So I I went through all the research on sclerotomes, and I actually found uh, a researcher from Australia. Uh, I'm forgetting his name right now. Anyways, he had done the same thing. So I was I had just gone through this whole process of going through all this research on sclerotomes, and then I find his paper, and he's just done the exact damn thing that I just did and he got published <laughs> um and he proved that they were they were fake it was Dr. Ivan Us- Ivan Usik Ivan Usik oh, nice. from Australia so he's doing a ton of research into neurological innervations of bones so he's been able to show that actually subchondral bone is innervated 
bone marrow is innervated. Um, but what's interesting is that they can make the connection that there's an innervation happening at the bone. And when they stimulate the bone, they can see that it lights up in like primary sensory cortex, motor cortex, a few other areas, but they haven't made the connection yet between the brain. Nuts. So that's why they can't say it's from this and this and this. So, uh, yes, Dr. I, Jason Ivanusik. Unbelievable. Uh, following on him. And so, yeah, so, so I, I figured, well, I got to throw that into the book. So I wrote a whole chapter. Basically, I outlined uh, Jason's paper and, and then expanded upon it a bit um, that showed that sclerotons were actually fake. This conversation epitomized to me the idea that the more we think we know, the less we really know. And especially within anatomy, we seem to keep learning and growing and understanding new layers and new levels of who we are and how we work. Rob seems to embody this. His desire to keep learning and keep growing never stops. I think, you know, for, for all of the therapists that, that want to expand their knowledge about, you know, beyond what you see in a Netter book or Grey's Anatomy or whatever, is to get yourself into a cadaver lab. If you want to have your mind blown about, you know, the complete variability of the human anatomy, and you want to reevaluate what you do, how you do, and why you do it, and when you do it, and where you do it on your patients, like it will, it will actually make you completely reevaluate everything in your practice. Get into a cadaver lab. So yes, get yourself into a cadaver lab, but also... Listen intently to what your clients are telling you. You know, I'm a product of my mother. I have the gift to gab and, you know, and the product of my father so I can listen because my, my dad is a cop, so it's very good at listening skills. Um, and I just quickly realized or recognized early on that everybody's story was different and, and everybody was feeling somewhat similar sensations, but because of their experience, you know, their, their experience with their discomfort was different. So, um, and knowing that, you know, the trigger points were sort of just a generalization and Netter was just sort of an average of, of the human body. Um, and also recognizing, I recognize this early on that, you know, um, you know what we call a, con- we, we have a term these days, we call it contextual values, right? So the, trying to balance the therapeutic relationship between clinicians is really important. And, you know, a lot of us come from a time where we were educated that we're up here and the patient is down here and you really, it has to be, it has to be a balance. So that was part of my balancing and um, sort of taking advantage of contextual values that they call today when really we were just calling it listening. So, so that was, that was, it wasn't really giving the patient power. It's just that the patient already had, you know, we had equal values and it was, and it was a way to diminish or decrease any type of elevation that the patient may have had of the perception of what that therapeutic relationship was. I had been to too many other clinicians where, you know, it was the typical, the clinicians up here and the patient is down here. And I didn't want to have that in my office. So I still don't have it. When, when my patients still come in today, there isn't this sense of urgency to get them on the table. We sit down, we have a chat. How's it going? What's going on with the kids? And, and that might take 10, 15 minutes. And that's just giving them the time just to like vomit out everything that is happening. For me, I'm not a counselor. I'm not a psychologist, not a psychiatrist. So I can't contribute any type of solutions, right? But I can sit and listen. Mm-hmm. And then we can get them on the table and then we can get some work done. When I first met Rob Libby, I was convinced he was technical, scientific, and practical. He impressed me with his book smarts and it turned out he had actually written a book. But the more I got to know him, the deeper he revealed himself to be. From his car accident, to his ability to listen to his clients, to his unending drive to understand the human body, Rob is like so many of us. He strives to understand who we are because he loves what we do. Members are loving ABMP 5-Minute Muscles and ABMP Pocket Pathology, two quick reference web apps included with ABMP membership. 
ABMP 5-Minute Muscles delivers muscle-specific palpation and technique videos, plus origins, insertions, and actions for the 83 muscles most commonly addressed by body workers. ABMP Pocket Pathology, created in conjunction with Ruth Werner, puts key information for nearly 200 common pathologies at your fingertips and provides the knowledge you need to help you make informed treatment decisions. Start learning today. ABMP members, log in at abmp.com and look for the links in the Featured Benefits section of your member homepage. Not a member? Learn about these exciting member benefits at abmp.com slash more.